Hey everyone, welcome back again to another Flutter tutorial and in this session we will look into how to handle exceptions when making API calls in Flutter. Whenever it comes to API calls, it is not just the case we receive the right response every time. There are multiple factors which are involved when making API calls such as it may depend upon the connectivity that is the internet connectivity of the device or else it may also depend upon the format of the request which we are sending whether it is in the right format or not or else it may also depend upon the server whether the server at that particular instance of time is able to process the request or not. So these kinds of uh, scenarios are something which uh, we need to address while making um, API calls. So if for example, um, if you are not going to handle this kinds of exceptions in real time, then the app is going to crash or it might work differently in the way that we don't want to. Right. So in this video, we will look into how to handle exceptions and we have here a simple example, right. Uh, if you take a look, I have, a, I have made a get request and we try to display that data in the list tile and so far now i haven't added any exception for this code block and if i try to rerun the app again it seems to be working flawless unless until if i try to turn off the wi-fi network and terminate the network connectivity over this device and if i rerun this app again you see that socket exception followed by some kind of clumsy data which doesn't provide proper information to for the user to turn on the internet connectivity for the app to work smoothly so the user may not be aware that um they need to turn on the network connectivity to uh, make this app running so in instead we have these kinds of clumsy data uh, which provide no information regarding the particular kind of exception or what we need to do to overcome this exception in this video we will look into how to handle these kinds of exceptions and provide users the more intuitive way of overcoming this exception when they try to face them in real time okay so without wasting time let's directly jump into the coding part and get this done Well, here starting with the main .NET file where we have used the generated routes and the initial route points to my home page and inside the my home page we have nothing much but a future builder widget that is going to display the data which we get as a result of the response okay and we have basically these conditions whether we will be checking for the snapshot.hash data if it is so we will be displaying that data in the UI or else if it has an error then we will try to display that error message in the form of text widget and similarly we will be checking for the connection state if it is a waiting one then we will be displaying a text message stating the connection is waiting and correspondingly we have the same kind of a checking over here for the connection if it is a connection dot none then we will be trying to display the corresponding suitable text messages in the ui okay if none of the condition gets satisfied then we will try to render a circular progress indicator okay and here for the future we have made use of future demo model which is actually an instance of demo model class and inside the init state we will be making a call to the fetch data method that is written down inside the demo repo class okay let's have a quick look into this fetch data method and here in the fetch data method we will be making use of the get method that is written down inside the base client class and we will be passing the api url which is divided into the base url as well as the endpoints okay and we the result is actually then decoded in the form of demo model class okay now let's take a look into this get method which is written down say the base client here and say the base client we have the get method that actually passes the url into uri and we'll be making http get request over that uri and we'll be making use of timeout of method and passing the timeout duration as 35 seconds which means that if we didn't get any response from the server till 35 seconds from the request call then we'll be throwing an exception which is the timeout exception okay for that we'll be making use of the dot timeout of method and we'll be simply returning the response over here so in order to handle exception now we need to first wrap this in say the try catch block let's do that and we have a catch over here and we we're making use of the get exception of method which actually maps the corresponding exception and provides the respect to error message okay and now instead of uh, directly passing that as the response we'll be making use of the process response method the process response method is actually written down over here 
can see here where we'll be segregating the response based upon the status code if the status code is something 200 that is if it is a success one we will be simply returning the response as it is that is we will be returning the response body or else if it is something other than 200 like 404 or 400 then it is considered as an exception and we'll be throwing the corresponding exception message which we get as a result of the response that is these exceptions are thrown from the servers okay and this bad request and the unauthorized exception are nothing but a classes that we have already defined okay you can either do that way or else you can just pass it as a string message okay um, based upon this you will be um, getting either the response of the body or else it will be thrown as an exception say the future builder method if 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 any exception is thrown then this condition gets satisfied and we will be printing that corresponding error message okay back to this uh, uh, function call over here uh, so instead of directly passing the response we will be processing that response and try to uh, pass that result over here and we have a catch block whatever the exception is thrown over here will be caught with the help of this catch block and this get exception string is actually a message which is written down inside the exception handlers class and we will be passing that exception over here as the parameter let's take a look into this get exception string method over here in this method we will be making use of this error message as you get as a result of the parameter and we will be checking for a socket exception we will be comparing this error message with the exception if it is so we will be returning the corresponding text that is we will be returning the corresponding string messages so these are some exception which we need to deal in the client side that is the socket exception format or timeout exception and these are something which we get as a result of the api call that is the message which you get from the servers that is uh, the server will be uh, throwing few errors with the mess error message and that is handled over here in these four fields okay and if it is success one nothing happens you will be able to see the same kind of result which we saw earlier if any throw exception is thrown then the future builder will be handling that okay and this condition is going to trigger and we will be displaying that data in the ui okay so but that's it guys that's how we can handle exceptions in making api calls in flutter hope you guys enjoy this video if you do so consider subscribing and i will see you in the next one bye